Hey guys, my name's Sam and welcome to PrepMedic. This week, we're opening medical supplies. I don't even know what I'm gonna call this video. Uh, I need to figure out something that's going to kind of condense down what I'm trying to do here because this isn't going to make sense to a lot of people unless you have been in a situation where you have uh, opened a product that's meant to save somebody's life, you've been under a ton of stress, and then all of a sudden what seems like simple packaging becomes a Rubik's Cube and you open the first layer and hey, there's a second layer there that you have to open. It can become very, very challenging. Beyond that, these things all unfold in a different way and have just slightly different uses. So while everything I have in front of you is some form of gauze or bandage or uh, uh, occlusive dressing, these are all very different in their use depending on the company you go with. So in this week's video, I'm going to open every single thing you see on this table to give you an idea of how it works, how it comes out of the packaging, where are the tear spots, and is there something particularly, particularly confusing about the product that we're using. I think this is important because while I would always recommend somebody buy two of everything before they put it in their first aid kit, this stuff's expensive. When we're talking quick clot at $55 for one package of that Celex gauze around the same price there. You have uh, S-rolled gauze, which goes in and out of stock. It's hard to get. You have things like the battle wrap, which I think is like $15, $20 and so on and so forth, it gets very expensive. And especially for products that a lot of people are never going to use in their life, it's hard to justify having that extra cost just in the name of practice. So that's why I think this video is important. I've got a ton of different brands uh, in front of you. So hopefully this applies to you. I'll try to leave like a category of these things being open so that you know uh, which time stops to go to. So let's start with our packing gauze, everything that we would use to pack a junctional site in uh, the event of a massive arterial bleed. Now, these are a little bit different. Over here, we have hemostatic gauze, and then this gauze over here is non-treated. Uh, survivability between these two is pretty similar. This is gold standard, but this is good enough. There's just a huge, price difference. This is going to be 50. These are going to be in the ones to tens of dollars. So let's start with kind of the most commonly known product here, and that's going to be quick clot combat gauze. Now, this is the XL version. I don't even know if they make that anymore, um, but this is kind of your gold standard. Now, the packaging here, we've got a couple different serrations to help you open it. You got two on the sides, and then you have four on the bottom, and you can open this with any of them. So you just tear it, it's gonna come out relatively easily. So pops out of the bottom here and it is all Z folded. So I can just keep on pulling this. It's not spinning in my hand. It's not going all over the place, which I really like Z folded versions. And then this is just packed into the wound. Pretty easy to find the end of it, but if you can't find the end and you just grab this with your hand, you're going to get what you need to start packing that wound. You're gonna notice a strip in the middle and this is a radio opaque line that is meant to show this gauze on any kind of radiograph. So if you're doing like a CT scan, an X-ray, that surgeon's gonna see this gauze and they can make sure that they get everything out of that wound so the patient doesn't get more massively infected than they already are and develop an abscess and all kinds of nastiness. Uh, this gauze is pretty clean. It is uh, impregnated with that hemostatic agent, but it's not really like gonna make things messy. Gets your hands maybe a little bit of a residue, but that's just about it. Very safe, you don't have to worry about it too much. All right, next up, we're gonna look at the Cellox Rapid Ribbon. Now, I did some commercials for these guys. There's a lot of different Cellox products, um, but this is one of their uh, hemostatic agents, and they're all gonna open relatively the same. So here we have two pull tabs, and they're uh, denoted with the black. There, it's just a different color. Just tear at the top. Now, these packages aren't gonna tear super easily anywhere else, so you kind of have to go with what they've supplied you. Unlike the Quick Clot, this is very messy. Now, this is the small version. I wouldn't use this if I were you. I'd use the bigger version they have, but it's the same thing. Um, so here we have this, and it like almost has like a cornmeal on it, and this gauze, when it's packed into the wound, uh, actually will form kind of a gelatinous clot in there. It will form like this gelatinous ball. Uh, there are some uh, studies out there that say that this is going to work a little bit better 
than your um, uh, quick clot and people that are on blood thinners. So this is gonna work a little bit better for that. Once again, though, you can get the thicker gauze there uh, and that's going to do well. And you can see it's made a complete mess on my desk already. So there is that. Now, coming up next, we have the H&H &H compression, compression dressing. We've got the NAR responder uh, compressed gauze, NAR S rolled gauze, and then an H&H &H tack gauze here. I wanna start with this one because this really is the gauze that it was the inspiration for this video because it can be very confusing. Uh, there's another version of this that comes in a green packaging. Don't be confused, they're pretty much the same thing. So with North American Rescue, anything that's red is going to open or move in some way. So here, I can take this guy, I can peel it up, and I can remove the gauze, but wait, there's another package inside of it. Now, this is kind of a, a slick packaging deal. It's it's there for a reason, but it can be very confusing. I short-circuited on a video a couple years ago when I opened one of these and like didn't realize this was going to be a case. So, like I just said, if it's red on North American products, it's going to open, not dissimilar to Striker Cot. So here, I can take this, I can rake that section back, and now I can pull this gauze out a little bit at a time. And the thought is, is that then this isn't like falling in the mud and somebody's blood getting saturated before you even pack the wound. You know, it works. And then you can just pull this all the way off. Now, this is a very similar consistency than the other gauze, but I'd say it's a little bit more fibrous. Uh, they're even a little bit more messy. So you've got a fair amount of it in there that comes in that packaging. So don't get confused by secondary packaging. There are a lot of different brands that do that uh, for various different reasons. If you can get away with it and if you're okay with the potential exposure for your gauze, I personally like opening it from that outer packaging. Just be aware that will uh, completely diminish any sterility that this once had. Uh, so just keep that in mind. And obviously you're assuming your own risk by, by damaging packaging or taking it out of that packaging beforehand. All right, so let's talk about some of this stuff here. We've got NAR compressed gauze, probably the most common thing and probably the cheapest. So two red lines open up just like that and then we can reach in, get the gauze. Now this one doesn't come with anything, but this thing is a brick as it stands. It doesn't just kind of come apart. So I find this is a little bit harder to get going. You can kind of pull it and get to the end somewhere. This is why I'm doing this video for reasons just like this. You can kind of pull it off. You notice I never like found the end on my own. And now this is not Z folded. This is just a wrapped gauze. So this turns around, it makes it a little bit less convenient for packing a wound in my experience. And once again, you have quite a lot of it here and it is pretty compact, but it comes out nice and soft, easy to pack a wound with. All right, moving on to the two H&H &H products. H&H &H makes a great product. One of the favorite, my favorite things is this tack gauze because it's really thin. It fits in a lot of different uh, kits very easily. Sorry, I didn't talk about that one. This one does not have markings on these serrations to open, but still pretty obvious. You open it at the top and then you can reach in and pull it out. Once again, these things don't open very well from anywhere else. I've definitely gotten stressed on scenes and ended up like cutting these packaging with trauma scissors uh, because my stupid brain can't figure it out. All right, so my understanding with this gauze is you can do it two different ways. So you have this tail and all of them that I open have this tail and you can take this and you can use this to pack the gauze down into the wound if you want. But there's also an end to it right here that you can pull out and you can pack in this way or use this as just a bandage. So kind of an interesting thing kind of comes out like the inside of a toilet roll and then you just pack that in the wound like you would any other gauze. Obviously it comes out as kind of like a, a trunk, a tube, um, but that's not going to harm you in this instance. All right, now, last but not least, we have the H&H &H compression gauze here. Now this, or compressed gauze here. Now this here, we open it and it's very similar to the other gauze, it just has a little informational sheet there. Once again, kind of hard to find the end and it will just unspool just like this. And you get a lot of it. So you get the idea with those. Let's move on to our pressure dressings and a couple different options from a couple different uh, vendors. So most commonly, let's start with a uh, emergency trauma dressing. This is the North American Rescue 4 inch ETD. The red, you can open it at the red. And then we reach in, grab it. This says uh, other side towards the wound. So as we open it, it's Velcroed to itself. And then it'll start to open. Now, 
some of this gauze has stuff that's gonna stop it from unrolling, or some of these bandages have stuff to stop it from unrolling. This one does not. Different models of theirs does. So just be aware that this could go everywhere very quickly. You have this absorbent pad that goes towards the wound. You wrap this and it has Velcro. This is going to stick the Velcro and that's gonna keep you from just like pulling it off their leg when you try to tighten it. These are gonna be tightening these. Uh, uh, very, very tight. Now up here we have the little bracket and a thing of Velcro. So it's gonna Velcro down and then we can take the rest and we can kind of feed this back through this clip and keep it secure on the patient. Uh, very important to keep it secure on the patient. Just know like when you wrap a couple times, you get more friction and it will make it much easier uh, to do this. All right, along those same lines, let's look at two H and H options. So we have the uh, let's see, what's this one called? This is the cinch hook compressive uh, comprehensive trauma combat dressing. Wow, that took me a little while. So you've got really big swaths here. You can open it from any side. You, there's a ton of them. I really like that. It just makes it easier to get to it. So we go through the first main one. It opens all the way down, and we get this neat little package. But this is the bandage. So the bandage kind of keeps it there. It's a huge absorbent pad, which is fine. Just make sure that this is located over it and you know exactly where uh, you are putting pressure. Similar to the Olay's dressing, it has this hook that's meant to basically give you leverage to make this a very, very tight dressing. You can put it through and then pull it back the other way and start wrapping it around. As far as I know, uh, this is not a multifunction dressing like the Olay's. Uh, funny story, I did this video already. Um, I went through the entire thing, opened up everything, including an Olay's dressing, and uh, I got to the end and realized I didn't record audio. So this is my second take. We're going through about $500 worth of product today, unfortunately. So <laughs> this guy here comes to the end and it will secure with a Velcro loop. Just make sure you're pulling these tight because this is a very elastic dressing. All right, last but not least in the H&H category, we have their mini compression bandage. Once again, I love these things because they're so compact, so easy to get into your stuff. And I tried to open it that way, it opened the other way. This guy comes out, no secondary packaging, pretty neat as it comes out and then it unrolls. Now there's not a ton of bandage here at all. It fits in one uh, camera. So I can stretch that a lot, get, them, get it around their leg, anything like that. This Velcro is going to adhere. And then as I come around, I can use this hook, which is the same as what's on the North American Rescue Bandage, one side and the other, it's going to hold tight. You have the absorbent pad in the middle um, to just put that pressure down and hopefully keep the wound from getting too messy and getting stuff on you. All right, kind of the one off in this category, uh, I've used this once. Um, it's a battle bandage, battle wrap, and it's supposed to be like a clear bandage. Relatively expensive, but kind of a cool product because you can see what's happening under there in theory. So on the top, we have one black pull tab. I think that's the only way to open this packaging. We open it and then we have kind of this going on here. Like I said, I've only opened this once. Okay, so now we have this guy right here and this says remove. And ta-da, you have the actual bandage here and we can just take this and we start wrapping it around itself. Now this is just such a unique, a unique product. We wrap and we wrap and it sticks to itself as you go. So this thing can be a mess really, really quickly. This is kind of a sticky side. I suppose you could even use this uh, as a uh, occlusive dressing on your chest, kind of just interesting as it goes, but it does have that uh, absorbent pad. Just be aware you have to remove that packaging first. So I can't even get it off my hand. All right, moving on to the last thing we're gonna talk about today and that's chest seals. So let's start with these guys because these are my favorite. I talk about them in a lot of kits. I basically use these and everything. Now these are a little bit older ones that have been packaged. So you're gonna see what happens over time uh, with these chest seals. Here I've got the two red openings because these are hyphen. They're made by North American Rescue. So we open them here, pull out of the packaging and Lo and behold, they're compact chest seals and they're small. So don't be surprised when they come out and they're really tiny. You have this gauze right here, which is meant for just wiping around the wound so that the adhesive actually sticks. When we train these things, when we go to a classroom, a lot of times you have like this really neat little chest wound and they're like, that's a sucking chest wound. Or they just wrote it with marker and you stuck that on there and it works great. And that's why people believe that you can take like scotch tape and make it a chest seal. 
in the real world, you have, du du you have dust, you have dirt, you have blood, grime, all kinds of other things that are going to make it very hard for that to be successful in the real it, in that situation. Now here we pull it off. Now you'll notice that the edges of this have gotten really gross. This still works just fine. This is a fine chest seal, but it is absolutely nasty. Now this one is vented. You can see these three portions that don't have um, uh, the stickiness on it. I like vented seals, but now my hand's all gross. So be aware, chest seals are always gross and these guys are small. It's a very small surface area. Now I'll show you in compared with their uh, individual chest seals. These are like their normal size. It's this except bigger. While I like these just because of their form factor and the relatively rare situations we use them, these bigger ones are going to be much easier to stick to a patient. It's going to just make it better in all aspects. So you have the same gauze here to wipe things off. I can't even use my hands now and a much bigger version, but they're the exact same thing. Now, the bigger it is, like I said, the more surface area can stick on their chest, the more effective they're going to be in the long run. Guys, I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below and I will see you next week.